live from downtown New Bedford with viewership from Peyton Aram to the Pacific Coast. Welcome to the show tonight where we meet the interesting and talented from the area. Yes, we tackle fun topics. We also do music. We do serious stuff, too. I mean, we have a fantastic show tonight. I mean, a fantastic show. Waiting in the wings, teacher of the year, Takeru Negayoshi will be on. We also have musical guest Mr. Sean Carney will be here. Yeah. yeah. We have director Josh, assistant Justin, and of course yeah. the sidekick yeah. of the century. <laughs> and big time 49er fan freak. It's Chops Turner. Hey Chops, what's yeah. going on? What's happening? <laughs> you know, Really, really happy tonight with your team going to the Super Bowl. Oh, oh, man, I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell. He's really showing up. Well, let's get caught up on the news a little bit here if we could. You know, yeah. uh, according to the Associated Press, and this is coming from the Associated Press, so it's, it's totally <laughs> legit. Rhode Island man accidentally shot himself in the testicles. This actually happened. What? Yeah, did you see this? Thank God. Thank God he didn't have any serious injuries. Now, I've heard of busting your balls, but this is ridiculous. What do you say when you get to the emergency room? Nurse, nurse, I need a CAT scan of my kahunas. <laughs> doctor, doctor, I need to grow a pair. <laughs> Actually, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have, right. been a, could have been a shaftectomy, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Chubbs, you're, you're a rugged guy, football player and all that. Yeah, if, you ever run in, if you ever run into this guy, right, right, and this guy wants to have an argument, you can just right. say, hey, hey, dude, you haven't got the stones <laughs> to argue with, with Chubbs. You know I mean? So anyway... Well, you know, the United States government is adding a new member of the military. It's called the Space Force. Did you hear about this? Yeah, Uncle Sam wants you. Oh, well, God. there you see it right there. That's the first member oh, yeah. ever of the United States Mike Pence, isn't it? Space Force. Yeah, there's Mike, Mike Pence kind of swearing <laughs> in the guy who's going to be on the Space Force. You know, I'm thinking, like, even though you and I are a little over right. the hill, right. uh, I think we could probably sign up for the, for the Space Force. You know, like, <laughs> Let me try this out for no, a second. Let me you. try this out. <laughs> Captain's log. Star date 1, 2720. <laughs> Captain Santos reporting. We've just passed Mars and we're approaching Uranus. <laughs> Actually, that reminds me. Where's Lieutenant Uhura? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is right there. I, I, like that. I, I, I always <laughs> love Lieutenant Uhura, did not you? Yeah. Scotty, I think we need more power. Uh, where's my tractor beam? Uh, uh, we're looking for the Klingons. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, where's Scotty? Where's Scotty? Uh, oh, wait a minute. That, that's hey, beam me up. That's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Scotty. What happened to Scotty? <laughs> beam me up. Uh, that's not Scotty. That's Chops. Okay. Beam me up, Scotty. Well, 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 you can be the first officer. Is that okay? Uh, okay, that'd be good. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have photon torpedoes? or? No, not yet. <laughs> I don't think they're what they used to be anyway. Thank God you haven't got the red shirt on. Then you'd be chopped liver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, stay away from the androids. <laughs> All right, phasers on stun. Let's go to the next <coughs> next topic here. Well, you know, there's actually a one hundred thousand dollar lottery ticket <coughs> that still hasn't been claimed in New Bedford. You hear about this? Yeah, no, a hundred thousand dollar lottery ticket that somebody hasn't come. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got you to be able to go down there and say that's me, right? <laughs> well, I actually heard a rumor. That a lady found the ticket and she had all this money and she went home and told her husband, hey, hey, let's pack. He said, where are we going? She goes, no way, get the hell out of here. The money. Uh, you know, actually, I don't know about you. Did you, did you uh, play the lottery? You still play the lottery? Oh, yeah, I played today. Yeah, you played today. <laughs> You, you didn't win, though. Right? I didn't win yet. It didn't come out yet. If you won, you'd still come down here, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Will. Well, let me take a look at the lottery balls. You ever see the lottery balls here? Oh, yes, yeah, see. Oh, the lottery yeah. balls, right? So I'm playing the lottery, and, and the balls always come down. Boom, 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 and, then, and then I lose. And then I try it again, and the lottery balls go. Boom, 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 and, and I lose again. And then I, then I try the lottery balls, boom, 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 and I lose. And then I try the, the scratch-off ticket. Scratch-off. Scratch-off. Scratch up. There. So it doesn't matter if it's the balls or scratch. I scratch the balls, the balls, and scratch. I lose anyway. <laughs> anyway, are the guests still here? Are they still uh, here? They're always sitting in the wings. Um, you know, I heard that if you win the lottery, right. you should really take the money and roll it over into your individual retirement account. Roll it over into your IRA. IRA, roll over again. No, never mind. Well, you know, finally, finally. One one last story, and then we'll move on. <laughs> You've heard of Snoop Dogg, right? Oh, yeah, man. Snoop Dogg, come on. Snoop, he's, he's the man. The man. Right? Yeah, he's the man. Well, Snoop Dogg actually made an appearance in Boston <laughs> very recently. And after playing at the House of Blues, he decided to go to a marijuana shop down in Uxbridge. Did you hear about this? Oh, my well, you God. Know, he's crazy. I, you know, 
Snoops has actually uh, had some problems, you know, but I, but I really, really like a lot of his music. Yeah, I do In too. fact, I have a side persona. Did you know this? Called no. Snoop Santos. <laughs> did you hear about this? You didn't know no, about didn't this? Yeah, well, well, uh, well, Snoop Santos. I, 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 wrote uh -huh. a, I wrote a song about chops. Uh -huh. ready, ready to hear this? Come Wait, on, rock hang it, on a man. second. Wait, hang on a second. Stay with me here. Stay with me. Stay with me. Chops. <laughs> yeah. Remember now. Remember. Remember. If the monologue sucks, you got chops on the side. Chops on the side. Chops on the side. If the guest ain't good, you got chops on the side. Chops on the side. Chops on the side. Just watch a show with attitude with chops on the side. Chops on the side. Chops on the side. It's all good. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. It's all good. It's all good. It ain't bad. You got chops on the side. Chops. <laughs> All I right, like that, man. I like that. I kind of like that. Slick. I like that. All that's right. hot. That's hot. That's you know, hot. Uh, does Mrs. Turner watch the show once in a while? Or? Oh, yeah. She, you know, you know how these women are. <laughs> she doesn't know something funny when she nah, sees I don't it. Know my, my wife doesn't watch the show, and it's a good thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Chop is in a great mood tonight because oh, yeah, his great. San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Are going to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, I can't but, you wait. You know, I actually checked. I Kansas City. Yeah. Kansas City is actually the favorite. I heard, man. I heard they were favorite. Well, that gives us more ammunition to play defense. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a prediction? Like, you think well, the Bulls are going to win by a field I think, goal? I, think the, gonna I don't know. I just think the uh, 49ers are going to win straight out. I just think. You know, it's going to be a defensive game. They're going to go up and down the field. But I think the uh, 49ers will be, uh, eventually, will be the winners. All right, sounds My good. My prediction. <laughs> well, you know, I have to ask you, obviously, the halftime yeah. shows. You know about the halftime shows? I be, heard about that. It's going to be J-Lo. J-Lo, oh, yeah. How low can you go? <laughs> <laughs> and and it's going to be Shakira, those hips don't lie. Oh, yeah, I heard. Oh, God. So the hips don't lie and all that stuff. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and by the way, when you were coming up through schooling, right, yeah. did you have, like, a favorite teacher? Oh, yeah, my music teacher. <laughs> oh, good. My music teacher, oh, yeah. Um, man, Mr. Robinson was a nice guy. Oh, good. Great. And I went to the glee clubs and all that stuff, you know, going to glee clubs, uh, singing in church, you know. Yeah, nice. And that's how I got my development as a, as a uh, performer and as a singer. You know? Well, tonight on the show, we have yeah. a gentleman who is not just like teacher of the I day, see that. I see teacher that. of the week. Yes. Teacher, we're talking about teacher of the year. Wow, and, teacher of the uh, year. <laughs> all right. Well, our first guest is still here. He didn't leave the building during that opening segment. Uh, he is actually the teacher of the year here in Massachusetts. He works at New Bedford High School. We're really happy to have him, and his name is Takiro Nageyoshi. Takiro, thanks for joining us here tonight. Thanks so much for having me. It's, it's exciting to be here. It's, it's been an experience so it far, has hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to still wrap my head around uh, what this conversation is going to be like. But well, 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 we brought in the teacher of the year, and he's like, well, you know, this is going to be like a a challenging interview when he's sitting in the sidelines going, oh, God, this is like, this is really, these guys are like off their rockers over here. But, uh, no, we're glad to have you over here. And, you know, uh, my wife's a teacher. I have a lot of respect for teachers because, uh -huh. you know, it's really an important job. Yeah. And you get to influence the youth and so forth. But let's get a little background. Not a New Bedford guy, right? No. Um, I'm actually from New Jersey. All right. Uh, wow. Both my parents come from Japan. And so uh, I was born and raised in Jersey. I lived in Japan for a little bit. Uh, and then I came to this side of, of the country uh, through college. I went to a college in Providence, and then I just kind of stayed around. So, Yeah, that's fantastic. We don't really have a large Japanese uh, no. community in the New Bedford area. Yeah, I'm a minority within a minority. Have have not seen other Japanese people here. Yeah, so if anyone knows any Japanese folks, please you, let me know. You might have run into a couple of Portuguese, maybe a couple of Cape Verdeans just here and there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just very few. Uh, but it's great to have you here. Thank now, you. tell me a little bit about your style of teaching. Um, you know, I, I, I remember being in school, and I remember there were teachers that were popular. There were teachers that struggled. Uh, you seem to be able to get through to them. Why do you think that is? Uh, I don't know if that's true, um, but to give <laughs> yeah. you a little bit of context, I am an English and also a research teacher, right. um, and I have the privilege of being able to teach AP students, and so um, it's fun to be able to really focus on the academic aspect of it. I feel like if you were to ask my students uh, what kind of teacher I am, they might say that I'm like really sassy uh, or intense. Um, and, and I sort of wear that with, a, with, a, with, with, with pride. Um, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to kind of recognizing students for who they are. And 
um, being honest with where you're at and, and, and trying to be as transparent and as authentic as possible. I am in my sixth year of teaching, so I don't feel like I'm anywhere in terms of where I need to be. And there are so many incredible educators, um, teachers you know, at New Bedford who uh, have been in the game much longer than I have and who deserve just as much recognition. And so, you know, having the title of Teacher of the Year is just an honor. And in many ways, it's just an ambassador right being able to speak on amazing education issues uh, it's not about being the best so. right. how did you get nominated for teacher of the year how did that all happen no it's, it's like this weird <laughs> it's a weird process um, so my headmaster nominated me um, and I had to write a couple of essays um, I had people from the Department of Education come into my classroom uh, observe my teaching have me reflect on that uh, and it was like a two months process where I would go through different stages um, and each time I would sort of go on to the next round and it would keep thinking like, okay, I feel like I'm pretty good with a semi-finalist. I think I'm okay with a finalist. Uh, uh, the final round was a conversation with the commissioner, wow. uh, which was super intimidating. He sort of brings me into this room after I had like uh, a panel interview with other teachers of the year from the past. And uh, yeah, he would grill me for like 40 minutes on, on various policy related questions. It was kind of like a pageantry. You Feels know? like a lot of pressure. It really does, you know. It, it, it's, it's, so, um, but then afterwards, uh, he was like, you know, congratulations, you're the teacher of the year. And so that <laughs> well, was one of my highlights. So is this yeah. put a little pressure on you? Like people go, hey, you see that guy over there? That's teacher of the year right there. It does. You know, I think it does put a target on I don't mind. mean to be doing that right now or <laughs> no, anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but I think I, I try to ground it back into what this means for me, uh, but more importantly, what it means for my students, what it means for the community of New Bedford. Uh, and to give a little bit context, right, we are uh, a school system, a district that has a lot of issues um, and sort of challenges, I think. Uh, and whereas the dominant narrative of how our school system and our district has been characterized is around you know, narratives of destitution, all these terrible things that are going on, um, I wanted to make sure that we were celebrating and recognizing the excellence that's there. Um, and, and I don't think I'm necessarily the most qualified to speak on that. I'm not from this community. Um, and so I've been really trying to focus on student voice uh, and, and, and using this platform to talk about, I think, districts like New Bedford, uh, turnaround districts, districts that serve you know, a lot of immigrant populations to let people know that we are a place to be reckoned with. And so that was a big part of, of my messaging. And, and you know what, in small ways, you sort of hear uh, the students repeating that uh, sort of talking point. And it, and it does feel really good when that happens. It feels like you have a lot of passion for the material. So does that show like with the students, they say, yeah, this guy really believes in what he's doing. I do, you know, and it's yeah. like, there are a lot of teachers who say things like, I don't you know, I hate this unit, or like, I'm sorry, we got to do this. Like, it's just the <laughs> curriculum. Um, and like, that does a disservice to our kids, right? Like, we have to be excited about what we're teaching. Um, we are selling our skills. We are selling our content. Uh, and I think the type of teachers that do resonate are those who can convey that authenticity and that passion that they have. Um, and so for me, I really try to put 100, 120% into everything that I do. Uh, and you know, in the moment, my kids might find me a little annoying or extra. But I think, I, hopefully, uh, if they are watching, they would feel <laughs> towards the end of the year that, like, you know, at the very least, I can respect that he put in his all. Well, you're 28 years old, right? So you're a lot closer to the age of a high school student than, say, somebody who's a lot older. Maybe there's a generational divide. Do you think there's an advantage of being like a young guy in his 20s like it's that? It's a double-edged sword. I think, you know, that when I first started teaching, I, I had seniors. And I was just out of college. And so, you know, my students were only like three years apart from me. Yeah. And so I think that was a little bit uh, awkward. Um, right now I have like about 10 years difference from even my oldest students. And, and so that's like a, a healthy uh, age gap uh, to be sort of an authoritative figure, but still be young enough. Um, I don't try to fool myself and, and pretend that I'm hip or anything. I just <laughs> try to bring my, my full authentic sassy self. Um, but yeah, I, I do feel as though I'm more in touch with uh, cultural conversations that are taking place around identity um, and, 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 and try to recognize and name that and, and, and embed that in our curriculum. And so uh, if that does resonate with a younger crowd that's more conscientious and, and socially politically aware, I, I think there's some kind of convergence there. Well, you know, you mentioned this, and I know you've been interviewed before in newspaper articles and so yeah. forth, and you're very forthcoming about the fact that you're openly gay, and even though this is your own private 
you know, I don't like to ask people about their <laughs> about their you know private ma private matters. Yeah. But you've made a point to say this that a lot of times this can be something where a kid feels more comfortable coming to you talking about their sexual orientation, their gender identity issues and things like mm -hmm. that. You being a role model, that kind of thing. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, no, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I think there's like two camps of teachers uh, who think, and no offense, older generations, tend to feel as though like your professional life has to be completely devoid from your, you know, your, te uh, your personal life. Uh, a lot of uh, LGBT educators don't have the luxury of separating that because um, who I am and, and what I do over the weekend with my partner, for instance, is a part of uh, what I bring to the classroom and the perspective that I have. And so this notion of being silent or censoring uh, that aspect of myself in the classroom uh, feels foreign to me. I, I do understand the perspective of educators who don't feel comfortable in navigating conversations around that in the classroom. Uh, but for me to be my most authentic self and to really connect with the kids um, and to be just transparent with who I am, I think it, it was important to not necessarily hide anything that I you know, am. And, and, and you know, I think about my own high school experiences and how I didn't have a single um, gay, openly gay teacher right, uh, affirm uh, that these people exist. Every sort of curricula uh, or the discussions that we talked about uh, was almost, you know, pretending as though people uh, with my orientation don't exist or even if they do exist, we don't really talk about them. Uh, and that didn't really create a safe environment for me. I, I, I felt uh, negative about it. I think I had a lot of toxicity built up. Um, and so that wasn't the kind of uh, culture of culture of invisibility that I wanted to bring into the next generation as an educator. Um, and so there's that aspect of like trying to be open and in a role model for my kids, uh, but also like open them to other ways of, of discussing and understanding these uh, issues. You know, I think a lot of uh, homophobia and uh, those sort of biased attitudes uh, fester in, in an environment of not being able to put a face and name uh, to people who are going through these different experiences. And so um, I try at least, you know, through lived example, embody that. But you know what's really crazy? Um, I felt as though, and I, and I wrote about this, uh, for a lot of my straight male students, uh, was what I was the most afraid of coming out. Because I've experienced high school and I know how, you know, straight dudes can be, right? They're not the most friendly when it comes to gay people. Um, or a lot of them was sort of my perception. And so if there was any reason for not coming out in the classroom, I always thought about how the messaging would be taken by a lot of my straight, you know, identified male students. Right. Um, but ironically enough, or, or a lot to my surprise and, 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 and to my delight, like, it, A, it didn't matter at all. Um, but B, like, it did open up an avenue for a lot of my students to come uh, talk to me about issues that they were having within their own relationships. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think we tend to give uh, and place a lot of expectations on men about what it means to be masculine and what it means to be a dude. And there's a lot of machismo culture, I think, embedded in, 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 a, in, in our communities. And so when there is an adult figure who sort of transcends that, um, I think it creates a little leeway and, and a sense of comfort for even our straight folks. Right. It, and you don't have to go back too far, right? I mean, you're 28, you go back 15 years ago and you probably yeah. would be in a situation where a lot of people would be uncomfortable with an open gay teacher. So you don't have to go that far back. So it's mm -hmm. great to see that things have changed for the better. What about hobbies? Do you have any hobbies? Like, what do you do? You know, do you cycle? Do you mountain climb? Like, uh, uh, what, I watch what? a lot of Netflix. <laughs> okay, that's all uh, right. You know, I'm, uh, I'm the advisor for the Film Analysis Club. Yeah? Yeah, so that's wonderful. Uh, a lot of my kids uh, choose movies that they want to see, and then every other week we uh, analyze them together. Um, and so I love, like, media consumption. Um, what else do I, I play a lot of video games. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, That's good. You know, no, it's, 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 been a, it's been a difficult year, I think, um, trying to tap that personal side of me. It's been hard to kind of balance my work uh, and my personal side. Um, and, and I think one of the things that I'm trying to be nicer to myself is, is giving myself a bit more leeway. Yeah, and, absolutely. And in, indulging in my hobbies a bit more. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> well, congratulations on having been nominated and successfully being deemed yeah. the Teacher of the Year. Thank now, you. is that 2019? Is that 2020? Like it's what 2020. Year? Yeah, oh, 2020. Okay. In January, right. I officially started my my, my reign. Oh, all right. Yeah, because I, like I don't wanted to be the teacher last year. I wanted to be the teacher. You this wanted year. to be current. I want to yeah. be. I want to be yeah. current. You know what I mean? All right. So uh, you got me current. Yeah, yeah congratulations. Thank I can you. tell that you probably are somebody that students would say, "Hey, that, I think that guy, that guy's pretty cool. I think I'm going to take his class." So keep oh. up the good work. Thanks. You know, uh, keep your connection with the students and keep working hard and and continue to influence the youth of the area. I will try. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Takeru Nagioski, the Nagayoshi. Ne yeah, I'm sorry, why do I do that? I got You got it right the first. <laughs> Takeru <laughs> Nagayoshi. Yeah, yeah. You uh, made my name Slavic for a second. <laughs> Nagayoski. Yeah, I, I immediately put you in some other spot. Uh, but he is the uh, teacher of the year and we're happy that he is here on the Paul Santo show. So we like to do this thing here on the show, who remembers? Well, who remembers the day that the Braga Bridge opened, okay? It took a few years for them to build a Braga Bridge, but it finally opened in 1966. They actually had a grand opening, and they actually allowed people to, like, walk over the bridge. See this picture right here? There's people actually, like, walking over the bridge. Isn't that something? I mean, we drive over this thing every day. Like, who would want to walk over this thing? It was actually named after somebody by the name of Charles Braga, who was a Fall River native of Portuguese descent, who actually lost his life at Pearl Harbor. So it was a great dedication to Mr. Braga. But look at all the people walking over the Braga Bridge. That was back in 1966. How about that? We're going back in time here on the show. And we have our New Bedford Area Picture of the Week. Take a look at this one, the moon over Fort Tabor. Ah, yes, you just can't get pictures like that in other parts of the country. A beautiful photo taken by John Matthias of J. Sill Photography right there, moon over Fort Tabor. And we have the Fall River Area Picture. Yeah, Westport is kind of a suburb of Fall River. This is the Fall River Area Picture of the Week. It is Horseneck Beach in beautiful Westport at sunset. And people don't usually go down there at this time of the year, but, uh, you know, the summer's coming. Like every single day, the, the days get a little bit longer. This picture was taken by Eric Pansick. So thank you very much for sending that in, the Fall River Area Picture of the Week. Uh we have yet another terrific guest live in the studio, a very talented singer, and he is also an attorney, and he's joining us right now. It is Mr. Sean Carney. How's it Sean, going? Sean, how are you? Very Welcome well. aboard. Welcome aboard. You are the same guy that ran for city council. I am. The and very same. A, and you're a barrister like myself. I am. <laughs> and you play the guitar. A little bit, how yeah. How about that? This guy's like a well-rounded guy right here. I like to keep busy. <laughs> So you're a New Bedford guy, right? Yep. You went and to raised. The high school, did you? I went to New Bedford Vogue. Vogue, that's okay. That, that's, that's good. It is that's okay. Good. The Vogue Tech Bears. Okay. And then law school. Yes, that's correct. Undergrad? What did you do your undergrad? Uh, Providence College. Ah, PC. Yeah, go Friars, yeah. All right, and then Roger Williams. Roger Williams for uh, my law school, yep. Yeah, wow, and then you came out, you took the bar. Yeah. You go buy that son of a gun the first time. I oh, did. I, I hated that thing. I did. You know, I, believe it or not, I'm an attorney too. People probably think this guy. You know. But uh, yeah, we managed to get by study and study and study. Oh, How yeah. much did you study for that thing? Oh, you know, you, I, <laughs> I was told you have to treat it like a full-time job. So yeah, yeah, that's what I, I did. I think, you know, from about <laughs> 9 a.m. to yeah. about 6 p.m., it was do nothing but study and, yeah. you know, then take a two-hour break and they tell you to let your brain kind of simmer a little bit, but... I usually just cracked out no cards. I was very paranoid to, to fail it. You know? Yeah, yeah, me too. And I think it's also, they, people don't realize, it's, it's like 900 bucks to take the test on its own. And then you pay oh. for a class to, to prepare you for the test. So that's another, you know, $1,000 or so. So it's a, pretty, it's a pretty steep investment. So you got to put the time in. It's gone up a little bit since I took uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> I think they call that inflation. <laughs> Yeah, inflation. Well, anyway, uh, you enjoy singing, and that's really great. And he's yep. going to do a couple songs for us. Everybody's going to have their way of relaxing. And Absolutely. one of them is to sing, which is what Sean does. He's going to do a couple of songs for us. The first one is by Marshall Tucker. It's called Can't You See? Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Carney. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take a freight train down at the station, Lord. And I don't care where it goes. Well, I'm gonna climb a mountain, the highest mountain, Lord. And I'm gonna jump off, nobody gonna know. Can't you see? Can't you see? Yeah. 
what that woman Lord been doing to me I'm gonna find me a hole in the wall and I'm gonna crawl inside and die it's cause my lady my mean old woman now well she never told me goodbye can't you see can't you see what that woman Lord been doing to me can't you see can't you see what that woman Lord been doing to me now as far as I can and I ain't never coming back I'ma take me a southbound all the way to Georgia now to the train it run out of train can't you see can't you see what that woman loved been doing to me can't you see yeah can't you see what that woman long been doing to me yeah Sean Carney right, thank, yeah. you, thank you you're going to Hollywood. Uh, that was, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a great job. I, yeah, you know, I like you. the way you put that feeling into it. You know, yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's an emotional song, so it's you got to have some more. I can feel that pain coming through. It. You know, yeah. <laughs> keep it southern. You know. Now, tell me about the politics a little bit. You did a nice showing a first time Thank out you. running for council. Thanks. What was that like running? I know your mom is on the council. Yeah, Naomi. She is. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so it was a it was a great experience. Um, I think I was really able to connect with the folks that are living in my neighborhood and just beyond. Uh, Ward 4 is a very influential ward in the city. You have the waterfront. You have a lot of our uh, major businesses downtown. It's a great place for folks that are not from the city to come check out. Uh, and I thought I could do a good job to serve those folks. Uh, but big congratulations to Derek Baptiste. Um, I think he's going to do a great job. He's, I've, I've had plenty of uh, opportunities to come check him out and, and see him um, and have, have some uh, talks with him. Uh, he came to see my band play not too long ago, so that was real nice of him as well. So we were able to <laughs> yeah, talk right, a little right, bit yeah. there. Uh, but I think he's going to do a great job for the city. He seems like he's going to be very approachable, and, 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 he, and he's there to learn. He's there to learn the ropes, and he's there to you know, make a positive impact. But you may be somebody that could come back at some point in yeah, time, right? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think I'll be back. You won't have, uh, you won't have seen my last uh, t toss of my hat in the political arena. Yeah, they used to say, um, we haven't heard the last of Sean Carney. He's just coming out of the break here. <laughs> that makes me sound like a supervillain. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We'll take it. it. We'll take it. So the kind of law that you practice, tell me about that. So yeah, I, uh, I serve as in-house counsel for Payson Smith Holbrook. It's a commercial real estate brokerage. So my day-to-day -day involves uh, real estate transactions, negotiating contracts, keeping, uh, keeping people up on the lease negotiations and also what's going on once the lease is signed, uh, making sure that you know, whoever we're representing is, 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 uh, is following the lease and also that whoever is on the other side of that lease is, is maintaining the terms of the contract as well. Uh, so that comes from putting out fires on the day-to-day -day from you know, security breaches all the way to something simple like soap dispensers just need to get installed at a warehouse. So <laughs> I guess they call me for all kinds of stuff yeah, now. That's all right. You got to be able to cover everything. Exactly. So what about the music? When did you discover that you had this love for music? Yeah. So, um, I'd always been involved in music, you know, in my house growing up, uh, music was always on. Um, so I guess that I just grew up around it. Um, I started singing, you know, back in the day when I was at Holy Family, Holy Name at, in the, in the junior choir there. Um, yeah. And then, you know, did a bunch of theater in, in high school with the Vogue Tech Theater Company. Um, they're doing Putnam County Spelling Bee this May. Make sure you go check that out. A little okay. plug for them. Uh, but however, you know, I, I, they gave me the opportunity to take the stage over there. And it's something that I never really shied away from. Um, I remember when I was 13, I bought my first guitar with, you know, the money I was able to scrape together from a birthday party. Yes, and wow. hey, Yeah, it was, uh, it was an Epiphone SG, uh, <laughs> like, special. It was... A, a pretty well-made guitar, but, you know, uh, it was definitely in the uh, beginner quality of things. And, 
you know, now I've uh, quite increased my collection, both in quality and quantity. Um, and I just, I've, I've been into music ever since, you know, and I've, uh, you're gigging, right? I am gigging. Yep. Um, yeah, tell me about that. So I, uh, I play the first Wednesday of every month down at Rose Alley Ale House right, right. here downtown. Um, that's an acoustic set. I do that from eight to 11. Uh, my band is going to be at the thirsty whale, um, which is down in South Dartmouth. We're going to be there the second Friday of every other oh, month, awesome. starting What's in the March. Band called? Cadence and company. We just oh, did a yeah. taste of South coast this past oh, year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're looking forward to doing some other bigger events. Uh, it's a three piece. We have a lot of fun. You know, the other two musicians in the, in the group, uh, you know, it, it de definitely doesn't pay me to say, but they're much better musicians than I am. <laughs> you know, I'm up here strumming chords and, and, and singing a few tunes, but those guys, my drummer, and my bass player, uh, Patrick Urbanic plays drums, Don Vicari on bass, and awesome. both of them are extremely talented guys. All right. Well, speaking of talented, uh, this gentleman right here is pretty talented himself and he's going to do another song for us. This goes back to what is it? The seventies? It's gotta be. Yeah. Early seventies, late sixties. This is great stuff. This it's, is Neil Young. I remember yeah. when this song was on the radio okay That's they had the skinny microphone yeah you know? yeah exactly yeah exactly little, little ball on it. it is uh, the great classic by neil young heart of gold once again ladies and gentlemen it is the very talented sean carney all right let's get the look he's, look he's got the little ooh, he's, oh, yeah. ready, he's ready to go sometimes i wear it when i drive just to mess with people <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go Searching for that heart of gold And I'm getting on Keep me searching for that heart of gold And I'm getting on Redwood, I've crossed the ocean for a heart of gold. It's such a fine line, divides in my mind that keep me searching for that heart of gold. And I'm getting on, keep me searching for that heart. And I'm getting on Searching for that heart of gold Keep me searching but I'm growing on Keep me searching for that heart of gold I've been a miner for a heart of gold Yeah, that's awesome you. right Thank there. You. That was awesome. <laughs> 
You took that song and made it your own. I try. I try. You didn't. You didn't, you didn't try to do like the Neil Young imitation. Oh, the, uh, start the, yeah, sorry, right yeah. now. No, don't do that. No, no, I'll save I, that for I like, Fallon. I like it just the way you did it. You know, <laughs> yeah, that was you. fantastic. So a guy like you, right? You're a pretty young guy, right? That's a classic from before yeah. you were born, mm -hmm. right? So what was it about that song that you like so you know, much? I just really like that song. Yeah. Uh, I can't. I couldn't tell you when the first time I heard it. It might have been. You know, sometime in high school, but like the song just kind of resonated with me, and yeah. I, just, I I liked it. And it, to be honest with you, it was one of those songs that I was like, oh, I'd really like to get into harmonica, and that was kind of the song I picked because it didn't sound like the harmonica part was going to be too difficult. Um, so yeah, so that's I've been playing that ever since. I've been I've been putting that tune in my back pocket for maybe about ten years now. Well, there aren't too many musicians that play the harmonica as well as you know play the guitar. So that's something that you have in your back pocket. That's oh, pretty thank good. You. Yeah, 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 yeah it's um, awesome. Yeah, harmonica's great. Um, you know, I, I wish I was a little bit better at it. Uh, it's it's yeah. a tough it's a tough thing to kind of sit down and practice. Uh, but what's funny about the harmonica is everything's in the same key. So if if you get a harmonica and some people are jamming, if you're in the right key, just whatever note to <laughs> on. You know? It sounded good to me. That's for sure. So your future plans now, what do you have lined up? You're going to obviously continue to practice law, play some music. Yeah, that's the plan for now. Uh, you know, I'm going to continue to, to keep working because I got to, I have to pay some bills and, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd like to eat every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'd like to go to Rose Alley every once in a while when I'm not playing. So uh, all that requires money. Um, but I plan to keep practicing law, plan to keep playing gigs. Uh, you know, I really, I, I kind of slow down in the wintertime a little bit, but that gives me an opportunity to kind of find new material and, and, and work on some other stuff. Um, and then in the summertime, I try to book as often as possible because that's, that's, people want to be outside and I like being outside. And if I can, you know, have a, have a cold Bud Light or a Corona and play some tunes for folks. I'm I'm a happy guy. Oh, so you can have a drink and play at the same time. Is that right? You know, well, put the, you got to put the drink down. If I had a third, if I had a third hand, though, it works with chops. I think. I don't I think know. I'll have to ask about that. But Only anyway. one hand on the mic. <laughs> hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. That was yeah, great. Maybe we Thank can have you. you back again down yeah, the road. Anytime you want. We really enjoyed it, Sean. Thank, Thank you, Paul. you so much. It. Sean Carney, ladies and gentlemen, our second guest here. On the show tonight. We always like to give a tip of the cap to the hometown heroes right here on the show. And tonight we're tipping our cap to Eleni Almeida Colvin. She joined the United States Navy back in 2012, two years after graduating from New Bedford Volk Tech. She has been serving our country with pride ever since. This was sent in by Jennifer Rabello. Again, a tip of the cap to tonight's hometown hero, and it is Eleni Almeida Colvin. So, of course, Chops, he's still happy over here. <laughs> hey, how about that guy with the harmonica? You don't play the harmonica, do you? Oh, no, I wish I huh? could. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I was, envy a guy was, like that. that. He, Keep he, me searching he, for a heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he he's didn't do the Neil Young. He's super great, super great. Yeah, super yeah, great. Yeah, I love that. That was great, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that was fantastic. wonderful. Wonderful. So, so uh, prediction yeah. in the Super Bowl. What? Give, give me a score. Give me something. I don't know. I don't know. I think the 49ers will win maybe. Field goal? Maybe field goal. Yeah, Maybe really, really goal. Oh, yeah. close. Like it that. might be. It might be. If they get started early, they might win by a large margin. Really? Oh yeah. Oh wow, you're getting cocky now. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's getting cocky. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no. Jimmy Garoppolo's going yeah, yeah. to the field. Okay. Anyway, no, if they can run, if they can run, that that gets the pass open up for the pass, you know. So yeah, right. If they can if they can run, they, they, they start, you know, they can do some damage. Well, at this time, we would like to yeah. thank our guests for being here tonight. Teacher, not of the week, not of the month. <laughs> oh, he was nice. oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teacher of the year. All yeah, right, kid, that's what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, Takeru Nagayoshi. Who was here on the show and uh, music <laughs> guest Sean Carney and Snoop Santos? We want to thank Snoop, Snoop Santos, Santos for coming yeah. by before. <laughs> Almost ruined the show. <laughs> but I, was, uh, I saw you doing this like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you were doing the Snoop in the background. Snoop, that was pretty Snoop, good. I yeah. like that. So chops on the side. Yeah, chops on the side. You know, if you haven't, if you're struggling, you got right. chops, chops on the, on the side. side. That's why you're here. Get some pork chops on the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, next week we have a gentleman by the name of Reese Arnold. And we also have a music guest, Jackie and Steph, from the duo True. Wow. Thanks to our director, producer, Josh Souza, our production assistant, Justin Pereira, and all of us for helping us out here tonight on the show. And, of course, Chops Turner. I'm Paul Santos. Thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you here right back next week, Monday night at 6 o'clock for the Paul Santos Show. Have a great week. Good night. All right. Thank you.